thank you for having me. Um, thank you for, for being here. Uh, I'm going to talk about it's a very technical talk. Uh, I'm going to show the demo. And I'm very happy to be here. So for, I think for the first time in my, in my career, I, I introduced myself. I'm Alessandro. And I, can, I don't need to say I work for, because I'm currently unemployed. So I can uh, bring, bring up my real nature, which is the cloud padded. And I opened, uh, a couple of years ago, I opened a co-working space, and I call it the cloud pilots because the pilots were the freelancers of the sea, and we were the freelancers of the cloud. And I can tell you everything about the economics of, pirates, of piracy and uh, democracy and everything. So, so reach out to me uh, if you want to talk about these topics. So uh, I'm going to talk, talk about the problem, what is progressive delivery, why you should care. Uh, and how to address the, the problem with technology, right? So that's why, that's why we are here and that's what we love. Uh, but before that, some trivia time. Who knows what this is? This is a sunset on another planet. This is sunset on Mars, uh, recorded in 2005 uh, by the explorer. Um, and it's blue. Why is blue? And any science people around? I, mean, I love science. I'm a chemist. Um, why is blue? Yes, uh, pressure, atmospheric pressure is 1% of Earth and it's full of dust and that's why uh, it's blue. Second thing, this is my happy family uh, made of five kids. Uh, they just sent me this picture, they're in Amsterdam and uh, I have to do this because they, they, they always ask me to, to talk about them. These are my lovely ch children, five of them. So what is progressive delivery? So. It's a, it's a technique to minimize risk. So that's the whole point we want to um, address here. Um, can be done in different ways, but the whole point is, and we know how costly is outage, how costly is not providing your user with the right features at the right time, at, in a timely manner. So you do want to introduce some sophisticated technique to, to introduce features in a control fashion, right? So it's all about control, it's all about um, making sure that your users see what you want to see at the right ratio and with the right feature set and uh, make sure that the right user sees the right thing. Why we need it? Because we want to minimize ris risk, improve user experience, have precise control, and especially because we want to be a data-driven organization, right? So we want to have, we want to run experiments, right? So we want to run, uh, we want to make informed decisions on what's going on and not just have feelings, right? So uh, not that feelings are bad, but they are not for, for, for a professional uh, uh, environment. So you need to understand what's going on so you can make a decision based on facts. And the facts are metrics, logs, um, real user measurements, not just feel like wrong or feel like it's right, right? So that's, uh, uh, being a scientist, that's, uh, that's what we used to do in the lab. You can't just say, oh, I feel it's gonna, this reaction is gonna go. You have to actually measure with, with, a, with an instrument, right? So that's why we call it instrumentation. That's why uh, projects like OpenTelemetry are so, so popular now because they give you objective reality, objective numbers, so you can base your decision on. And what do you need to get there? And it's not an easy path, it's been around for a while, but we always wonder what, do we, what kind of stack we need to get progressive delivery going on, right? So most importantly, I think it's the most important layer, is this smart load balancing thing, right? So could do it in different ways. I'll do it with, with Istio today. But there are plenty of tools out there, uh, still probably lacking uh, good cloud native or cloud based load balancing. I know uh, Microsoft, Google, they have this smart load balancing layer, but most likely you want to do this in cluster, right? So, and things like Istio or Cilium Service Mesh will give you this very accurate, very precise control of where your traffic is going and why and based on what rules and so on. And and you need weighted backends, right? So you want to know, you want to control exactly what part of, your, of that 
incoming traffic goes to which backend. And of course, you want to program this, right? You, cannot, you don't want to be there and move a knob. You want the knob to go by itself, right? You want to, the knob to be automated. So, and of course, you want to instrument and do uh, everything based on data. Kennedy, so what we're gonna show in the demo is a Kennedy release. What does it mean? It reminds of the actual beers in the coal mines where they were dying fierce when the, the amount of CO of carbon monoxide increased in the atmosphere. So we, they actually use real beers uh, in coal mines where to alert the people that were working there when the beers is dead means that the CO level is going too far and you have to get out of there. So that's, uh, that's the canary release. You, you introduce a new version of the application. It's gonna receive some small amount of traffic and then you're gonna watch, right? You're gonna experiment. You're gonna measure the impact of the change, version two or version X, um, measure it and make a decision out of it and, and progress as the uh, all the signals are in place, things are going well, your users are not complaining, especially you don't wait for the users to complain, but you wait for the, uh, for the signals or the uh, metrics or traces to, to tell you what's going on. I wanna skip very fast because I wanna get to the demo with one end, of course, because I'm a pilot, I can do it with one end. Um, another tool, so for this, for this automation, you do need special tools, right? So you can just, um, can just do it with the regular, Kubernetes objects, you need something more, right? So, and that more thing is, uh, of course, is one tool that is part of the Argo ecosystem, right? So Argo ecosystem is pretty much loosely coupled um, tools, including Argo workflows, uh, batch system, Argo events, notification. The king of the ecosystem, of course, is Argo CD. Everybody knows it. It's the GitOps uh, tool of excellence, being in in France, I can, tell, I can speak a little France. And what we want to focus today is Argo Rollouts, which is a side project or a part of the Argo family, which controls uh, progressive delivery, which makes easy to control exactly this, this thing. So why we, need, why, can we why we can use it? Because there is a new plugin, Argo Rollouts is all about plugins, um, to move these knobs. And there's a new plugin called uh, about the Gateway API. If you don't know, the Gateway API is a, a project within the uh, SIG network of Kubernetes, which will not replace, but will probably be um, a big change when you think about ingress in your cluster, right? So it's a kind of a unifying API for all sorts of ingresses, including, of course, the, the classic ingresses like, uh, like Nginx and Trafic, but also for the service mesh, because service meshes are also a big part of, uh, they provide these ingress services, for example, like Istio. So Gateway API is like the mm, common denominator for all sorts of things uh, about ingress in your cluster. So because of this Gateway API plugin for Argo rollouts, we don't need to care that much about implementation. We can just focus on, on us one set of APIs, one set of objects that will make uh, things work no matter which implementation uh, you can use. In fact, like uh, you will see in the demo, I'm not using any Istio specific objects, no Istio gateways, no virtual services. We all love and care for those, but they are on, like, on the side now. We focus on creating gateway API objects instead of implementation-specific objects. So that's how Argo rollout works, more or less. So there's a controller. Everything is a controller in Kubernetes, right? Some, some kind of routine that's always there and is watching for something to happen, specifically a rollout. It's a new API. It's the object that controls what's going on uh, and where to send traffic. And so the rollout controller watches for these new objects and when detects there is a new or modified object, changes the, um, uh, creates these new deployments based on what you want to do and 
also is the guy who moves the knob, who moves the knob back and forth between the, the versions and between the, um, between the two canary and stable deployments. And what is the knob? Is the HTTP route, which is an object within the gateway API APIs uh, that contains the, the backend weights that we were talking about before. But it will be much easier to understand when, um, when I show you the demo. And this is just the same thing. So what is the knob here? Because of the gateway API controller uh, plugin is the HTTP route. So I think I'm perfectly on time, 10 minutes on the slides, and wish me luck. Ah, so everything is on this GitHub repo. You will see, of course, it commits at 3 o'clock in the morning, but that's uh, <laughs> who, doesn't do that, uh, who doesn't do that, of course. So. Now, there are also more recent uh, commits. So, um, first of all, we're gonna need a cluster, right? So, I use the amazing Sivo Kubernetes service because it's a cluster in almost a minute. I mean, in my test, it's like a minute and 10 seconds. I think they can do better, but they definitely leave the other cloud providers in the dust, which is uh, amazing. So I just create a cluster, which is, uh, uh, I create an IP address because I don't like IP addresses. I don't like to show things on localhost. I like real IPs and real DNS names. So that's why I always like to create like a public IP address and some DNS, DNS names so we can actually show some real addresses in, in the browser, in the browser bar. So I create a DNS zone um, and so on. So I create a cluster. I'm skipping this because I really, because it takes some a minute and I want to stare at the screen for a minute, but that's how it works. So it's just, a, I created with, guess what? The best CNI at the moment, which is Helium. Uh, why not? I mean, it's there, so <laughs> why not use it? I'm not using anything from Helium itself, but of course I can always look at the Hubble UI if I want to see what's going on, but that, that not for today. And this is the crucial step. So install the gateway API CRDs. Don't ask me why it's not part of the regular, it's not part of the um, default objects of Kubernetes. I think we're just gonna live with this. So it's something that maybe we can ask our cloud providers to just install for us, but it's a step, it's a simple step, but it's still one extra step. Of course, all this stuff should be automated via, with Argo CD or GitOps or some other uh, tools, or you, but for the sake of clarity, I'm gonna, I show it here. So, and then, Istio, right? So, Istio is installing the default profile, the only thing you, you have to care for, and because I originally, or like, I wanted to also extend this demo to multi-cluster, it's not there yet, that's why I'm deploying multiple ingress gateways. One is for the ingress uh, traffic coming from outside into the cluster, and one is the east-west gateway. Forget about that for a moment, it's just there. It's another pod that runs a gateway, but it's for a future, and there's another readme with the multi-cluster, but it's not there yet. So today we focus on single cluster, progressive delivery within the single cluster. Uh, that's why there's some extra stuff in there, but don't worry. The most important thing is that there's this annotation that you can put on the, um, on the load balancer, from specific from Sivo, so the load balancer comes up and it got some, uh, some specific IP address, specifically this one, uh, which is mapped to my DNS zone, so everything becomes easier later on. Right, so then I want to see things, right? So I want to observe things. So what do I, knew, what do, what do I need for that? Uh, the classic Kube Prometheus stack. You can, do, you can go about this in 10 different ways. Uh, I love the Kube Prometheus stack. You can see, uh, you can see it deploys, uh, deploys Prometheus, Grafana, the old shebang, and especially, and you can see the uh, the values over here. 
So it's very, very vanilla, just I like the latest version of Grafana, and I want to provision dashboards already, so without, uh, um, without me clicking and uh, pushing dashboards or uh, adding dashboards later on, I want Grafana to come up and have all the dashboards I need right away. So that's why you can load dashboard from a URL or and or, and I, I think I did this already, you can create extra dashboards with, of course, with uh, um, config maps, right? So, okay, so now the, pro the um, monitoring stack is done. You can optionally install Argo CD, so these things can easier. Just don't, I just add this step if you want to, and this is the most, this is the thing, the, what we're talking about, which is, sorry, one end. So this installs Argo rollouts, 10 minutes. Uh, what are the values here? Not, not too bad. It's uh, it's here. Uh, Elm values. Just I want the latest version of everything because it's a demo. So probably you do want to to do this stuff also. Also the dashboard is enabled, and uh, I especially this I'm en enabling the service monitor to be deployed. The service monitors are objects part of the Prometheus uh, stack. Um, API, which enable the Argo rollout controller to be scraped by Prometheus. So I don't need to configure Prometheus. I configure uh, the Elm chart of the Argo rollout, so it deploys the service monitors. Uh, service monitor. You see there's a bunch of service monitors already deployed by Prometheus, uh, plus one or uh, yeah, one one for the Argo rollouts and one for the Istio component. So those enable uh, scraping of those targets by by Prometheus. Now, now that I have or Argo rollouts and it's a pod, of course, is running, and you can tell rollouts. So it's uh, just a simple pod. Oh, come on. Yeah. Okay. So Argo rollouts, just a simple pod. There is a controller, right? So nothing is happening. It's just a controller standing there waiting for my commands, like every obedient controller in Kubernetes. So what most important as well? So I need to add extra because this is still not. Of course, production ready. So there's a little thing that I need to add, which is which is this is airbag uh, role. So I'm just adding a few objects to the role associated with Argo rollouts. So Argo rollouts can actually do something interesting, specifically changing, uh, creating, and and changing um, HTTP route, HTTP routes, TCP routes, and so on. So that's it uh, now that everything is set up, I can, uh, I can deploy the plugin. The plugin system for Argo rollouts is based on config maps. So there's a small config map that you put in a very specific place and you give the URL of the plugin to download. It just works. Uh, and then you, you restart the, the, basically you restart the pod so the, the plugin is picked up. So that's very simple, it works. And what's next is to, well now I want to see this stuff that I just deployed. Oh, so this HTTP bin uh, uh, application, it's not the one that I want to show, but I want to show that uh, this, is, uh, this is the magic of Gateway API. Didn't create a single Istio object, I'm just creating one gateway um, and it's interesting because the, that's how it works. It uh, takes some time. So there's one gateway, which is, is not even, so normally in Gateway API, when you create a gateway object, it creates a pod, which acts as an ingress gateway. In this case, 
because I'm using these addresses, I'm actually attaching this gateway object to an existing service, which is the gateway API, uh, ingress gateway that I already deployed. And so this catch all, all ingresses, because I'm, see I'm not specifying a, a URL, so it takes all URLs. And then the HTTP, HTTP routes, this is also the separation of concerns that is at the core of Gateway API. So a system administrator, a cluster administrator will create the gateway for you, and you, developer, ac with access to, for example, the HTTP namespace, are free to create your HTTP routes to at and attach those to, your, to, to the gateway that will provide the ingress. So, for example, and this should work if, of course, Safari, because Safari always, ah, yes. And so you can see that uh, Gateway API works. Now, let me skip a few things. So also Grafana, Grafana, Grafana. See? works out of the box. I just deployed this and all the dashboards are already there. So especially the Argo rollouts, there's no rollouts now, uh, but the control is up. Right, so, um, so you can open all this stuff, it works, Prometheus, Abol, and so on. Uh, now, now for the actual rollout, right? So you get to create just realized I'm actually right-handed. <laughs> so for the rollout to work, you need to create first the services and the HTTP route before you create the uh, rollout object itself, which is this one. So these are simple, in the canary, services. So I'm creating two services, the stable and the canary, very simple, uh, and an HTTP route that has two backends, which points to the service I just created. And then the rollout, is an object, where is it, this one, um, which lists the canary and the stale and the stable, lists a strategy, in this case canary, um, and it lists the steps. It, I'm not doing any analysis, I'm not gathering any metrics, too complicated, but it's there, the mechanism is, is there. And then it, that's the, basically it's the deployment template. So the rollout is meant to be a drop-in replacement for deployments. So let's see how it works. Still right-handed. And okay, so now I have the rollout and I can, there's a nifty Argo rollout uh, plugin for kubectl, so you can get, so now you got this, uh, um, output on the, on, on the, on the, uh, come on, on the terminal, you can see there are five pods of the stable release, uh, the, the revision one, and then you can go and check the, the, the interface, now you can do this with the command line, of course, but what I want to do is to do it. Ah, you can actually also check. Of course, this is the, the application, it's version 1.0, all good, and then I just roll a new version. And so now, and you can do also this, watch. Yes, so this is the HTTP route, and if you see, the weight just shifted 30% to the Canary release. So, and now it's slowly going through this, to the paces, and uh, uh, executing your, your, your idea of a progressive delivery. The, I don't know if I want to wait until it finished, but when it finished, the interesting thing is that these things are gonna be swapped. So you're gonna see that uh, uh, the stable server is gonna wind down to 20 and then zero, and then the stable will be 100%. So automatically switch off, will switch again to the, because now the, 
what this candidate now is going to be stable, right? So is the, once the progressive delivery is done, then the candidate is promoted to stable, and the old version becomes the, the old revision, and the next one will be the next candidate. You can see now, see the switch? I catch, uh, catch it uh, just in time. Uh, there are more things in the demo, of course, uh, but we haven't, we don't have time to go through everything, but there's a interesting workload ref when you don't need to, we can have a deployment already and refer that from the rollout, and you can also do some interesting stuff with the HTTP based headers. So, yes, almost done. It went smooth. Surprise, surprise. So, first of all, so some resources out there. There are excellent articles, uh, great articles from our friends uh, and my ex-colleagues as well. Um, so check it out. We stand on the shoulder of giants. I don't see Nick Young, but he's the guy behind the old gate, uh, not, not the only one, but definitely the gateway API person, if you want to know more. And especially Costis, with Amazing work on the Gateway API plugin for Argo rollouts. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to Sivo for the infrastructure. Amazing. Cluster is in less than a minute. Thanks to Marino uh, for the tips. And if you, uh, first of all, kubespaces.io is, is what I'm working on. By the way, I have extra stickers also from the tag <laughs> application delivery, which is uh, <laughs> something I do. And if you don't have anything to do on this Tuesday, you can see me spinning at House of Cube, which is a great, so for the first time, I'm not speaking at Kubecon, I'm DJing at Kubecon, which is pretty cool. <laughs> right. Any? Any questions? Yes. Um, I know very little about service meshes, so this question might be dumb, but um, you already mentioned that you're working on a demo for multi-cluster, so what you could do with multi-cluster would also be automatic promotion of workloads from dev staging prod. Do you think this is a possibility similar to maybe uh, what Captain or Cargo are doing today? I don't know cargo, actually. I know where it comes from, from Acuity, right? That one. Uh, so I cannot tell right now. The thing is, so I was exploring the multi-cluster thing and doing m Istio and Service Mesh and Cilium, of course, they do a lot of, they, they are meant to solve that problem of multi-cluster. Uh, the thing is, I wanted to do it with gateway API only objects and I could not find exactly how to do it because I wanted to stay away from from service mesh specific APIs. Couldn't make it, we, I have a year or six months before the next reject, so. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Alessandro. Cool.